This is the uh, Medivac ionizer, which is the rebranded Mountain Breeze one. And the Mountain Breeze ionizers always had this weakness in that the neons in them, in them uh, always tended to blacken quite quickly, and the resistors and sears them burnt out, sometimes actually failing quite dramatically and blowing tracks off the circuit board and killing the ionizer, which is a bit annoying because the neon indicator, the little indicator light in the front, blows up the whole unit. So here's how to change the uh, neon indicator for a different one. Now, let's uh, investigate why this failed in the first place, or why this went, certainly it went black. And the resistor's a wee bit sort of like sooty in there, and left a little uh, brown scorch mark. Um, the voltage we're talking about here, it's, it's 240 volts. It's the UK, my mains voltage is 245. Theoretically in Europe it's supposed to be 230, but to all intents properties it's 240. But the NEAN indicator strikes doesn't light uh, from zero, zero volts, it strikes at about 90 volts and it runs as soon as it's struck the voltage drops back down to about 50 volts. So we'll say 50 volts. It's quite an odd waveform. If you looked at half of the sine wave, each half of the sine wave, it would actually be up to, say that's about the 330 volts, so that's about 100 volt there. It would strike there, run for that whole period, and then it would extinguish around about 50 volts so mo most of the sine wave it's lit anyway. And if you do the maths, then the, we're dropping about, say, say for, we'll round it up, dropping 200 volts across the resistor. And I measured this one, it was still measuring 100k, which is quite a common choice for overrun mean indicators. And if you work the current, the uh, current out, um, I equals V over R, so that's 200 divided by 100k, so let's uh, get that accurate. Well, that's uh, 2 milliamps, isn't it? Um, 200 divided by 100,000 equals, yeah, 2 milliamps. And that means the resistor is dissipating 2 milliamps times 200 volts is 400 milliwatts. And the resistor they're using is a quarter watt resistor. It's only rated at 250 milliwatts. So it's being overdriven. And that's continuous. It's, it's happening 24-7. Now, I'm going to put in a 220k resistor. So now we're looking at 200 divided by 220k. So that's um, 200 divided by 220k equals. The current is now going to be 0.9 of a milliamp. And so that's a 0 0.9 milliamp. And the power dissipated by the resistor times 200 is going to be 180 milliwatts. 180 milliwatts, which is well within the continuous rating of a 250 milliwatt resistor. So that's what we're going to put in. Now, I've pre-stripped these leads um, and I've got my neon indicator and some heat shrink sleeving here. So I'm going to start by putting the resistor in. Now, you may hear a slight buzzing and sort of clacking noise in the background. That's a, that's a little cheap Yeehoo soldering iron that I'm about to use for a proper job for the first time. Wow! See if I can break the habit of using the, um, the old Antex and start using these cheap Chinese ones and see what they're like. So, tin these leads and I'm going to put the resistor on the shortest lead just because I want a bit of extra length in that. So I'm going to solder that on there and then check that out. Yep, yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to put a bit of heat shrink sleeve right over that. Um, and I'm going to slide it way down onto the wire, out the way, because I don't want it too close to where I'm soldering at the moment. And then I'm going to crop that resistor lead about there. And the neon. Now, the neon, you don't want to solder too close to the neon indicator's seal because um, it can damage the seal. So I'm going to come about half an inch away, which is about 12 to 13 millimetres. And I'm going to very carefully, not too much time doing this, I'm going to put a wee drop of solder and, and tin the end leads. Quite often in manufactured neon indicators, you'll find that these are actually, um, these leads are actually crimped. And I'm going to tin this resistor lead and solder 
the neon on. I'm hoping I've left enough uh, heat shrink sleeving here. So I'm going to uh, just hold that in position and flow the solder. Oh, blob, don't want a solder blob, but that could go through the heat shrink. Right, that's pretty good. And I'm going to get another bit of slightly thinner heat shrink. Could use the same size you want. I'm going to put it over the neutral. And then I'm going to solder it onto the um, neon indicator lamp too. Try not melt the case with the solder arm. Interestingly, I just measured the power consumption of the ionizer without the neon indicator, and they always quote these ionizers as being about 0.3 watt. In reality, I couldn't measure it. The plug-in power meter thing wouldn't even measure uh, the current. I'm just trying to, I'm struggling to see a thin lead here. There we go. Uh, I get the feeling, oh no, that's not soldered properly. God, I'm so rubbish. Okay, that's acceptable. He said not very convincingly, you know what, I'm going to solder that again. I'm going to actually retin that and solder it because I don't want to leave it hanging off precariously. The lead is quite springy and trying to focus on that tiny lead uh, is actually... Oh, actually that's quite handy. That has actually just uh, aligned itself perfectly. That's good. That's it done. So now I'm going to park the solder iron up there. I could plug it in at this point. I could try it out, but... Uh, Will I do that? Will I plug it in and try it out? No, I'll put the sleeve over it first. So I'm going to get the heat gun now, which is part of the soldering station. It's this Chinesey one. Uh, I'm going to turn the soldering side off, and the heat gun is set for about 200 degrees centigrade. And I'm going to use it to melt the heat shrink, or shrink the heat shrink, onto the wires and come round the resistor. Comes up to temperature very quickly, it's quite good. This is a very useful part of this tool. It's actually worth getting these little uh, heat guns off eBay, the sort of Chinesey ones. They're actually pretty good. You set the temperature and the airflow you want. In fact, I'll set the airflow up. Just a little bit higher. And yeah, they're very good. I like it. Now what I'm going to do, now I've done that, is get a bigger bit of heat shrink and I'm going to slip it over the end of the neon. And over those leads at the bottom. And I'm going to use it to just uh, act as a protective shield around the neon. And extra insulation. It should also shrink down and hold those leads in place as well. So I'm going to try and get it nice and even around that. There we go. And that will run on for a while. You may actually hear this buzzing in the background. It's, the, it's not annoying, but the soldering station, the Yihua soldering station, is a, just makes that noise in the background. Now I'm going to plug this in, and we'll see how well the neon shows up under the, the LED lighting. There it is. There's a little neon indicator glowing away. It's actually it's going to show as a flickery thing because um, it is switching on and off very quickly uh, with the main cycle. Um, if you wanted, you, if you're quite happy to have the ionizer without uh, any indicator, you could cut these leads off and you could insulate them and then tie them back along the mains lead, but keep them well away from the high voltage needle tips. Um, this is one thing that um, Mountain Breeze always did very well. Their separation. I'm just going to touch the plug to those to discharge that. You'll hear we fizz and you probably saw the neon glow briefly when I did that. That's just discharging it. Mountain Breeze always did the isolation very well. They always had the, the mains at one end of the circuit board and the high voltage at the other end. And in this case where they've got this sleeving and the hardwired components, again, they've got all the they've got the mains down this end and then there's complete separation. Not like some of the lesser brands of ionizer that try and save space by curling the needles on the circuit board back down the middle of the circuitry. And um, even with the neon indicator, it's actually a, a modest separation between the wiring. Um, and the uh, high voltage outputs. Now for this I think I'd probably end up gluing this in place or something like that because originally it clipped into this little frame but because the neon lamp gets very hot um, it tends to fuse itself into the thing and then it breaks it as it comes out so 
I'll probably stick that in using something, but at the moment, at the moment it's not too bad. And that's basically how you change the knee indicator. Um, and restore it to as good as new, because uh, these simple, these capacitive multiplier um, ionizers will last for decades. They're so utterly reliable, they're, they're just very, very good. Um, uh, but I do wonder, um, the, I wonder if that will actually shot the parameter now that I've put the knee indicator on. Although having said that, it's only going to draw about one milliamp with uh, the resistor I've used. Is it even going to show in the meter? Still not showing the meter. No, it's not even showing the current draw. Nope, it's so low. Um, but yes. Oh, job done. <laughs>